Welcome to the grand final of the first China BP at the LCU 2012. Congratulations to all four teams for advancing so far. The motion before the House is this House believes that the consumer technology industry should be patent free. So without further ado, I would now like to welcome the first speaker, Kim Taeyong from ENET. <laughs> Madam Speaker, when Samsung and Apple, one of the two most prominent companies in our entire world, are fighting over the fact that their cell phones are round. When iPhone just in fact actually increases the length of their iPhone and not actually develop any particular technology regarding the development of the consumer interest, we on side opening government and BNN believe that we should actually abolish that unnecessary patent. Therefore, what we're going to prove to you on BNN, what I'm going to mainly prove to you is when a patent right can actually be curved and why it actually brings more development to the consumer rights and to the development of that particular technology. However, we on BNN actually believe a main stance in saying that consumer technology, what we're talking about are things such as cell phones, right? When we're talking about the development of the technology, the patent fight that we see between Samsung and Apple, we believe that that kind of nitpicking court laws are actually very superficial. We believe that those court laws should actually not exist, but rather that time should be consumed and for the better development of that particular technology. We see a lot of case examples in the current status quo and when patent rights are actually not absolute. Say, for example, the Fair Use Act in where we allow professors or educational act uh, actors to actually use and show some of the content of books or actually theses for the sake of the consumers and the for sake for the educational purposes. We believe that that is very inclined with our stance coming from the opening of government is saying that consumer technology should actually be something that we should protect and only under our motion is something that we can actually promote. So let's, without any further ado, let me go into my first argument about why patent rights can actually be curved. Because the main idea behind the patent and the principle that we propose on BNN is that the patent was mainly served for the purpose of compensating the individual for their hard work. No, thank you, ma'am. To encourage the further innovation of an idea and to actually bring public interest. We believe that the patent laws that we are currently using right now actually is bad for compensating that individual for their hard work. It's bad to encourage that further innovation of that idea and fundamentally directly contradicts the idea of the public interest. Why is that? So let's first go into the idea of what happens if an individual multi-billionaire company actually owns a patent. We believe that that monopoly actually exists within this particular company. Why is that? Because fundamentally we accept on the opening government that no one can actually bring a new particular idea when that patent is only exclusively owned by one particular company. It is even more exclusively owned by that company the moment where a lawsuit actually occurs and gives side towards one particular Apple or one particular Samsung. We believe that that is the moment where absolute rights are actually created and precedent is actually leaded to further further degradation of the development of that technology Point. and once that monopoly actually exists in today's society is the moment where it prevents other new companies from coming into the market and prevents other companies from bringing new ideas. Before I go on, yes sir. So don't you see to the fact that if there's no patent for this company, they have less incentive to develop because they'll just use their company's name value and their power to push their products across. No, we do not think so. And I'm going to prove to you why they actually do have an incentive to actually bring more alive technology into the status quo within my own further arguments. So please wait. Let's go on to the second idea about how it prevents the progress of value once you actually have this particular monopoly. Because the existing monopolies already prevent the incentive for other companies to develop because fundamentally there is no competition. If one cab one company such as Apple actually exclusively owns the right of say for an app store then obviously it prevents this particular company Apple from developing new ideas and new like products because fundamentally because that Apple has the exclusive patent right that is the moment where it creates disincentive for people to actually buy other products but only buy Apple right. as a whole. We believe that Apple does not have an incentive to create that kind of technology but secondly and most importantly it prevents new and smaller companies from challenging that particular idea and coming into the lawsuit and coming into that particular market. Why is that? Because the moment where a 
small or middle-sized company, I've already told you to sit down. But the moment where those small companies actually try to come into the market, that is a moment where app, like, like companies such as Apple, companies such as Samsung actually intervene and say that that particular company at technology is invading my patent right. The moment where that lawsuit is actually created, it prevents and deters other small companies from entering in the market because fundamentally they do not have the capacity to actually fight against a multi-billionaire company, particularly in the lawsuit. The kind of compensations that they will receive is actually going to be in the millions. We don't think that those small and middle companies actually have the capacity to pay that particular lawsuit, which deters and prevents these people from coming into the market to begin with. But let's go on to my third idea. So. about how it prevents the interest of that consumer. No, thank you, sir. Because fundamentally, we believe that there's absolutely no progress of the ideas because there is actually no development. We believe that everyone actually has the right to enjoy new technology and the advancement of technology, but the moment where that idea is, has, actually has no development, it directly goes against the right of those consumers. But second of all, and most importantly, we believe that the people are, with, uh, are actually dependent upon the price of that company and based upon the price and the monopoly created by that particular multi-billionaire company. Because as I I've already said everyone has an incentive to actually buy please sit down everyone has an incentive to actually buy, buy brand new technology and particularly use it if an individual multi-billionaire company has exclusive rights regarding a particular patent then so, while the people have the incentive to buy new technology that is the moment where people actually become dependent upon that multi-billionaire company and if that's the case then obviously companies such as Apple companies such as Samsung actually have the capacity to actually control the prices and the moment they control prices, it directly goes against the idea of the free will of those individual people, thus going against that particular consumer. No, thank you, sir. And because there is actually no competition between these individual people, there's actually no incentive for the price to, there's actually big incentive for the price to actually go up, directly going against the idea of the consumers. But why do we, why do we think on B and Ant, uh, actually a world without that particular consumer patent is actually better? Because it progresses the interest of that individual people. The distinction that we want to make with pharmaceutical companies is that if pharmaceutical companies companies actually create a formula to actually solve HIV AIDS. Every single pharmaceutical company should follow that formula because if you actually change one ingredient within that formula, the result is actually going to be very, very different, detrimenting the lives of the people. The, mo the differentiation with cell phones is that if you actually change one microchip or one idea regarding the cell phone, it brings a brand new cell phone, it brings a brand new idea. And because it brings brand new ideas, in that particular context, we believe that that is the moment where a patent, a world without patent, is fundamentally better. But second, and most, uh, and another importantly, it gives more incentives for these companies to actually think out of the box. Because in the status quo, Samsung and like like Samsung and Apple are fighting over the idea about a round. Phone. We don't think that this is very beneficial to the consumers, but even if that's the case, a lot of the companies are focusing upon that one particular patent. The moment where everyone can actually have a round phone is the moment where comparative advantage is actually decreased upon that particular idea. Therefore, if you want to survive in the market and if you want to spend a lot of money and if you want to buy a lot of consumers, then these companies actually have to think about brand new ideas brand new ideas that were out of the box and the moment where out of the box ideas actually come into today's society that is the moment where consumers are actually benefiting from the new technology that they particularly deserve i thank the prime minister for a speech i'd like to welcome Now I'd like to welcome the Leader of Opposition, Lo Kim Ho, from Golf Course. Yes. Thank you. Speaker Saw. I find it very disappointing to see that BNN predicated the entire case upon one singular case, that of Samsung versus Apple. We don't think that just based on that case alone gives them in enough of a coverage to debate today's motion. The questions, the key assumptions here are as follows. Why is the consumer technology industry so special? They tried to, they, they tried, there's been no response from them, even though they tried. And the second part of the burden is to say, how would patent free technology, how, how, would, how would having no patent laws actually drive that kind of competitive, competitiveness? How would it benefit the consumer? Because if we see fundamentally in this motion, it is about the consumer, it is about advancing the consumer technology industry, and how best do we achieve, uh, achieve it? So let us, let us see some of the arguments that came up from end. So let's see, firstly, they say, oh, 
you're not going to have a, you're not you're going to have a problem because you're going to have apparent monopolies. What but do we mean? don't think that under the they're living in some kind of paradigm where projects like Kickstarters, things like venture capitalists and entrepreneurship don't exist. We don't agree with that. We think that entrepreneurship and small a small startup still have still don't suffer from the kind of barrier to entry that they that they propose. Whenever we have the kind of big monopolies fighting over round round phones, we say that these companies. These developers are just exercising their exercising their right to fight for what was uniquely their contribution to their own company, and we think that they need to have that right. You know, they need to be able to exert that right in order to say that, hey, I produce this. I want an incentive, uh, incentive to keep innovating. I need uh, and I need to win this to show that. To show, to show that developing countries like Vietnam and some other countries that are very good at bootlegging stuff are not, it's not going to take, it's not going to take the things away from me and claim it as their own. So the second, oh, sit down, sir. The second idea is this. They say that, oh, because the monopoly is bad, but then the monopoly is bad because the consumer will be hurt in the end. But without exactly telling us why is monopoly so bad and why would that why would that be a problem with monopolies? Well, we think fundamentally whether or not the, the question of fairness ultimately comes is something that's left to the market to decide, right? If you want to pay $600 for an iPhone, go ahead. If you wait, want to wait until it drops to $500, go ahead. If you feel that it is a fair enough price, People will pay for it, and judging by the uh, judging by the sale of iPhone five, oh, we think that the consumer has decided that this monopoly by Samsung and Apple is not exactly a huge problem that warrants oh, a, ju a very just hold on that warrants a very drastic change, drastic change such as abolishing patent laws altogether. And do you really think that it's good for the consumers if Apple has exclusive rights over this patent and they skyrocket their price of their iPhone to $1,000? Do you think consumers still have to pay for that price? Now, if consumers don't want to pay for that price, they'll, well, they'll just say, no, Apple, your, your phone is too expensive. I'm not going to pay for it. I'm going to go for Samsung. I'm going for LG, Nokia, Motorola. There's so many choices out there. Leave it to the free market to decide. So let's move on to our positive contributions to this debate. Earlier on, I've already asked the very key, the very key questions here. That is the idea of why is consumer technology industry so special and why does it need this patent, uh, patent laws to protect, uh, to protect itself? Fundamentally, we think that when it comes to consumer market technology, we're not just talking about Samsung versus Apple, but also many other consumer technologies such as, such as laptops and many, many other devices as well. So if you want to talk about this, it's not just based on functionality alone, but also based on style. So yeah, round iPhone, the roundness of the iPhone corners is a concern. The, star, the stylishness, the utility of it, the functionality, everything plays a, plays a part. And if the companies are able to derive that kind of unique selling proposition, they need to be compensated for that hard, for that hard work. They need that kind of money in order to drive, not to drive it forward, to drive it forward. Further, we say that you need to allow this kind of, you need to allow this kind of monopolies, this kind of price setting to take place so that we so that achieves that achieves equilibrium between what is a fair compensation to the to the person who developed this technology or the company who developed this technology and to the consumers who may or may not be willing to pay for that for that particular technology. Why does is this equilibrium so important? Because when it comes to consumer technology industry, it's a very unique, it's in a very unique position whereby they need to take pump in a lot of R and D money in order to come up with a unique selling proposition that gives them an advantage over the uh, over the other competitors. They need to have the kind of, that, that kind of advantage so so that they can have the incentive to do to do so. And speaking of incentive, this brings me nicely to my sec to my second point. In a larger scheme of things, when you abolish the patent laws will you retard the development of consumer technology market because now there's no one who's willing to translate academic research such as Pentium technology, solid state physics. There's no one out there who's willing to do that, do that because they're not being compensated for that work at all. So what happens as a result is that there's a trickle down effect to the consumers whereby they are hurt because no one, no one bothers to do anything special, no one bothers to advance the consumer technology industry 
industry, and no one is able to no, no one is able to actually produce anything that's special that's ultimate, that ultimately appeals to what you want. Rather, instead of having an iPhone three, four, five, and maybe the new iPhone, not all you're left with is just some minor der derivatives, maybe better looking glass, better looking buttons, so on and so forth. Things that don't really come under things that may or may not really come under patent laws. So. What ultimately what our stance is, what we what we on site opposition go go for is this. We need to achieve a balance between consumer technology industry and pay, and patent laws. We need to protect these developers who spend a lot of R and D money, and we need to allow companies to exercise their right to assert their authority over their unique contributions to the company, to the consumer market, and to the consumer market at, uh, at large. And we think that going by our paradigm, going by status quo, we are be we better serve the interest the interests of the consumers when we allow them to have this kind when we allow this kind of healthy competition and my second speaker will talk to you about how patent laws foster that kind of healthy competitive environment that is needed for the consumer technology to try for all these reasons please go with opening opposition thank you Madam Speaker, the whole reason why we created this con concept of intellectual property was for innovation, was for really, really new ideas. But when we look at what's actually happening, what we see is iPhone, like the only difference that iPhone 5 has with iPhone 4 is that it's a bit longer, right? And so people make these jokes saying that iPhone 6 is going to be longer, iPhone 7 is going to be longer, and at the end of the day, it's going to look like a sword. And to fight for this, Samsung is going to make their phones wider and wider, and it's going to look like something like this, right? So this is a kind of picture that we're seeing where all these kind of companies actually have patents over really simplistic ideas like a round corner or like a icon that's shaped like a square. And now companies are not really going for that core innovation that really is needed. Here, here. The kind of innovation that we first saw when like, our technology developed from 2G to 3G and when that concept of smartphone actually first came out. We're not seeing those kind of big innovations happening. We want those kind of innovations. That's the reason why we want to get rid of this idea of consumer technology. Sit down. I'm going to talk about why, especially in the case of consumer technology, better innovation in that technology is possible under our model. But before going into that, I have two points of responses to make to the um, ideas ca that came from the leader of opposition. The first was uh, the previous speaker saying that we don't see why monopoly is so bad. When these consumers actually want to pay for that price, why not? But we tell you that the reason why monopoly is bad is because when consumers actually pay for a certain product, the kind of idea that they like that is that actually exists is not only the willingness to pay for that product important, but the ability, whether they can pay for the product or whether they can't here, here. pay for the product is even more important. So even when I want to purchase this kind of idea, yeah. when the price is too high because a certain company is monopolizing and raising the price higher and higher because they know they're not going to have other competitors that's going to lower the price, you know, even though I have the willingness and I really want to purchase the product, I simply don't have the ability to pay the product. We think this is actually infringing upon the kind of right to access that certain product and the kind of idea of affording, being able to afford the product. We think this is very harmful to consumers. Madam. But my second point of response is, of rebuttal, is to the idea of research and development and the idea of incentive in general. 
We think that the reason why when it comes to consumer technology, it's actually different from ideas like pharmaceutical companies and those kind of other areas is because we think the degree of incentive, like degree of investment itself is very different for you to actually, you know, make a medicine that can cure AIDS to create a medicine that can cure cancer. And when you, when you actually want to create a phone that has like round corners, the kind of money yeah. that is put into these it's things here, here. are different. But, my, but more, more importantly, my second response to this idea is that we think that these companies are still going to be able to get that kind of compensation under our model. Because you know when you actually create an innovation that is completely new, like when the idea of smartphone was first like innovated and first created, you have the first mover advantage into the market because for that amount of time that it takes for other companies to copy your idea and copy your technology, for that amount of time you can actually have that idea all to yourself, right? So because of this kind of first mover advantage, we think that these consumers will have to buy that kind of product. We think that until other companies actually, you know, cheaper that kind of price, I have enough opportunity to garner that kind of compensation of research and development. And that's the reason why they're still going to have that incentive to create more products but more importantly in this debate this de no. this debate is about like what kind of incentive of innovation and what kind of innovation we want to see in these companies and that's exactly what my uh, constructive argument is going to be in telling you that first of all there will be, be like better variation of innovations and secondly there will be better quality of innovation before moving on any PO POIs? well yes we think fundamentally you haven't yet engaged with the point we don't think that most consumers have a right to luxury items. If they don't like, if they can't afford it, just go for some alternatives like Nokia, incidentally not Korean but well. We think that it's very arrogant for you to say that you don't have the right to you know, purchasing a smartphone. Yeah, we think sure. that's no different from saying that you don't have the right to purchase education because even though you don't have education, you yeah, don't yeah. die from it. We think that you know, this kind of idea of information is even more crucial, even more fundamental in our 21st century. And we think that say, yeah, yeah. by saying that poor people shouldn't be able to purchase that because they have a lack of money is simply not standing in this debate. But more importantly, let's go into the kind of idea that we are going to give to you and why it actually creates better variation of innovation. We tell you that when this idea of wheels, like the round things that you see every day, was first created, it was very innovative. Innovative because before wheels existed, it was really hard for people to move products and like transport really easily. But if the idea of wheel itself was patented and if people were re restricted from actually using and utilizing and creating variations of this kind of idea, things like carriages things like bicycles and things like cars would never have been you know innovated or created we think that when these companies actually have the right to create you know take that idea and you know bring new variations of that idea only then can like the best utility and the best comfort of life can exist in our society that's the kind of benefit that comes comes from our policy but we tell you the kind of idea that came from the leader of population was that you know style is important we, we think that you know just thinking about it the kind of idea of whether you pinch your iPhone and it like moves to a different picture or the kind of idea of having square icons or like triangular wow. icons or round icons is not important when you compare it to the kind of functionality and the kind of quality of life that this kind of technology is going to give to you or the kind of service that this technology is going to provide to you. The reason why the quality of innovation also stands under our model is we think that when it comes to the idea of intellectual property, it's actually very similar to a BP debate. If we you know, say that if you have a new argument and we credit you just for the sake of, sake of having a new argument, now you're going to see opening houses with 15 arguments and closing houses with 20 new arguments that are just arguments for the sake of being new. But the reason why BP is so unique and so you know, has a like, high quality of debate is because we credit you for the quality of argumentation and the quality of extension that you bring about, right? We think it's the same innovations. When you start cred crediting these kind of companies for having round corners or triangular corners, we think that really big innovation that is really needed in our society can never take place. That's the reason with only our policy, that kind of quality of innovation can take place. Why do these companies have that incentive to create that big innovation? We think that because when all of these companies have actually have the same innovation in having that, having the same comparative advantage of a round corner or a triangular corner, now what these companies are going to start looking at is a really big innovation that can really differentiate from other kind of competitors, from other kind of companies. And now they're going to start looking at things and 
create those kind of innovations that moved us from 2G to 3G, those kind of big innovations that can really change our life. You think that we're the ones that are really fighting for consumer rights, we're the ones that are protecting innovation. This debate goes to open government. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Our House of a Opposition believe that, you know, patent, patent <laughs> is good, necessary, and beneficial, not only to customers, but also to companies. By what? By the nature of patents, my partner has analyzed to you, which I will bring more materials to you further. And the second, how it initiate in, in an environment for competition that will allow, that will encourage different companies to try as hard as enough to bring new ideas, new services, or new creations to the customers, to please, to please customers, giving more choices to customers. That is how patents is inherently beneficial, not only to customers, but also to companies. First thing, I want to uh, give some rebuttal to, about what has been talked about by last speaker. Well, they've been talking about, you know, innovations about brand new ideas. Well, I barely heard something brand new ideas because all the new ideas they've been talking about is like improvement on the, you, you know, existing ideas. They say they have a pay, 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 uh, patent, right? they have a kind of technology right now, and other companies all share it. Then they can make some, you know, modify it, change it, and then turn it into brand new ideas. We don't regard that kind of brand new ideas. Where does brand new ideas come from? Is that, you know, some companies have the technology, they have the patent, they have you know, monopoly, they have competitiveness existing in the market, and other companies also want profits. Other companies also want uh, customers to buy their products. They you know, kind of envy the kind of patent that some companies have. Then they come out, recruit some yeah. know, intelligence, not this type, to making something brand new to attract the original customers to their own companies. That is how brand new ideas actually happens in the market. And the second is about the arguing for people's rights to have iPhones. Well, I'm glad to see everyone has iPhones here if you want to, but iPhones is kind of luxury instead of basic human rights. They've been talking about rights to education, rights to food, rights to shelters. It's definitely close to people's existence and identity, you know, living in this society. It's not of, I'm not using iPhone, I use you know, Nokia, I'm, I'm a bad person or something like that. So please pay attention about that. And also they're talking about some, you know, helping small companies uh, to get into the competition. Well, what, if we put your policy into effect, all those small companies can only, you know, learn or copy those big companies. There's, you're actually cutting their chance to create something new because you allow them to copy the big companies. That is exactly the tragic, you know, sadness. They all, a lot of Chinese companies have, they, all the work they have been doing is manufacturing and work for the big companies like Apple or something else. We don't want that to happen. And also they talk about, you know, iPhone maybe longer and longer. We see people already be, been joking about it. And uh, the company can, can read the sign and make something new, change their patterns. Well, Joseph has left iPod. Well, make him, you know, rest in peace. News, when see new CEOs come to the companies of iPods, we have very reason to believe that iPod become not only become longer and lo longer, well, may become larger and larger and whatsoever they will decide by themselves. So based on all those reasons, we don't see clear problems that presented by the opening government, and we don't see clear speciality that should, you know, only talking about CI, CTI, you know, patents instead of other patents we've been talking about. We see no actually proof of burdens coming out from the opening government. And I'm gonna talk about why the CTI is so important and extend what has been taught by my partner. And second, I'm going to explain to you the mechanisms of how this policy, our policy will police customers as a whole. Why we see 
the paintings, the, inven the inventing of a painting is really, really hard, right? We need people to do that. We need a large amount of money, and there's no guarantee of success in uh, inventing a painting. Well, a lot of PhDs just are working day and night, and through all their life, they just you know fail. We need strong incentives to let to attract people to do it at the very first place. And after this long time of hard working, we need to re we need to reward them. So it is quite justified to compensate the individual, yeah. whoever. Not this time, okay. Uh, not this time, sorry. Whoever invent a painting at the very first place, the not kind of problem, but it's justified. And also, if we remove the mechanics that we reward them in the end, nobody want to do it at the very first place. That is, we touch this problem at the very source. Bam. Lower house. When your partner characterized consumer, te uh, consumer technology industry as being focused on style, how much time, how much resource, how many PhDs do you need to create a rounded square icon? Well, I think his ex Singaporean accent is just trying to say, well, painting has a lot of things, not only about function, but also about style. Yeah. That is also part of uniqueness you're talking about here today. So the next, next point is how it will please the customers. Well, if you want to, you know, debaters to improve, what we will do, you host a competition. You invite judges, you invite audiences, and organize the first China BP. That is how exactly okay. we, want comp we want competitions among different yeah. companies on this time. And also, well, if you want better services, you know, better iPhones, better LG, or better something, something like that, how to achieve that is by allowing companies to compete with each other, to, to make out their competitive niche over each other, and, give, and, let the, and attract customers to choose for themselves. And also, uh, and if the competition is so important because competition is the only way to, for the technologies to get better and better, get, get technologies to advance more and more. So if we need, we, need uh, we need competition in the first place, and also we need companies to participate in this competition, to get involved, and, and to get involved so that they can offer different things and offer varieties to customers to choose. That is how we customers as, how we as customers get pleased. And also, in the, in the end, we're going to, to prove, to identify, to recognize what they bring to us. That is giving them the right to patents. Let them to have their own competitiveness. And let them earn, earn their own money. Because companies are money driven instead of you know, doing some charity and shoulder the social responsibility to let everyone have an iPhone in the end. So we say it's quite a healthy mechanism working in our society that encourage more companies to participate in this competition and because the painting is a very fundamental reason for them to enter the competition first and the competition is quite beneficial not only to uh, customers but also to companies for them to get better and better so for all those reasons very happy to propose to oppose thank you Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen in the audience, we believe that what we saw, what we witnessed so far in the opening house was just a deadlock because we had many concessions on many ideas 
as to where we want our industry to go, where we want our society to go, but with no clear direction in as to why, in specific case, a consumer industry, this applies or doesn't apply. So first that like that we have witnessed so far is to, you know, whether there is a right to iPhone or but moreover and more importantly, is monopoly bad, especially when it comes to consumer industry at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker. So let's go on with that first. So what's so wrong with that? Other than the price fight they had in the opening house, we believe that moreover, more importantly and more specifically, to these kind of industries, to this kind of industry where you know you're trying to make innovations to make consumers buy it because it's a consumer lifestyle, right? So it's minor details that are important to you, then it is reducing the competition for these kind of uh, companies to develop these kind of characteristics at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker. Which means, uh, she characterized like a BP debate, so let's characterize like a BP debate. If we only had closing government as one team in the debate, we wouldn't try so hard after all because there's no opposition. Same thing, they don't try to have innovation because they know at the end of the day they're going to have iPhones, they don't have Samsung or whatever other companies competing against them. But moreover, more importantly, so basic concession Point. over, no thank you, over the opening house is we want innovation to our society because it's good for the consumers, especially in this case. But really, who harbors it more? Now, let's move on to quickly about the nature of patent, which was their open government's, no thank you, not now, uh, open government's first argument, but which could be developed better as to why the nature of patent doesn't apply in this case specifically. We believe that for a government, it's essential that it performs its duties when it comes to, say, externalities. That is, if there's too much of a, no thank you Nadia, if there's too much of a bad thing that we don't want in our society, or there's something good that we should promote, but will not happen when it comes to free market, then government should protect it or government should ban it. The former case being, you know, pollution regulation, monopoly regulation. Industry-wise does not stand in these kind of issues. So, like in those cases, when it comes to positive externalities, as in innovations, how much profit, how much benefit, how much utility that every single one of you could be gaining from the overall general standard of these consumer industries developing will be better in that sense, right? So we want more innovations. But basically, we had patents in the past because of the fact that the cost was way too high, right? For example, medicine companies cost like tens of millions of dollars and takes decades to develop single medicines. And moreover, there's no way to regain the revenue afterwards. Small firms in which many companies exist or you know, when it's just individuals making these kind of um, developments, they don't have any methods in which to take back these kind of investments, take back their time after they have developed it without the protection of patents. So what they do is set a time limit, right? So it's just basically buying the time in order to incentivize these companies to research and develop more, which doesn't stand in this specific case today, Mr. Speaker, because of the fact that, first of all, for these kind of innovative companies, uh, innovative creations when it comes to consumer technology, um, like we said in our POI, there is no clear distinction as to how much you know, R&D actually goes into it when you're making just minor differences in functionality or style or whatever. So. But moreover, we would like to say that these companies actually have, and this came up from the OG, that these companies have a way to regain the profit because they already have the production functionalities. And so. another minor point to point out with the opening opposition is why, you know, style is important, so you need to protect the right. First of all, we believe that style and functionality is not always different. We have a rectangular phone because it's much easier to hold the phone. It would be the same as suing all the other companies out there for, you know, having the mouse fit to the size of a hand or whatever. But moreover, we say that when it comes to just clearly design and not a functionality, then it has, they have clear incentives to differentiate in those kind of suspects. So we don't really need to matter about those issues because they want differentiation in order to, you know, um, say this is a different product, this is the brand that you're buying, and this is the kind of stuff that iPhone is selling with their brand image. Now let's move on to our unique contribution, which is going to talk about what really happens in the test code regarding legality of the issue. Before you move on, closing. Um, the biggest fault you have is, sir, when you talk about utilitarian benefit, you're in fact, this motion regards companies, you're in fact allowing stealing in a systematic level. We're not talking about stealing in a systematic level, Mr. Speaker. When you say that iPhone has a rectangular shape, and you know what, just for the sake of having these kind of functionalities, 
but, the other, uh, but they would like to uh, propose it as something that is unique to them. So we'll moreover explain why they do that in the sales code. So why do these companies sue each other over wrapping glasses? It's not because they believe they really believe that it's such a good matter in the uh, it's a, such a good so, unique function. They're not that stupid, right? So what they actually do is they sue, for example, the iPhones over touch stars, over the rectangle shape they have been talking about. Because of the fact that when it comes to legal issues on patents, if you sue, for example, if I sue you on that matter, then until the case is resolved, until the sentence is proven, then you don't have the right to sell no thing, you sell the product. For example, if Apple, when the Apple company sued Samsung, they, while the conflict was going on, while the lawsuit was going on, they couldn't sell these kind of uh, Samsung phones they were accused of, which is basically rectangular. That's the reason why iPhone companies, that's the reason why Samsung companies sue them, not because they really believe in those new innovations, really, really new, right? So, two things. First of all, they sue on a lot of details that are really trivial, that are not really regarding innovative, because it doesn't matter at the end of the day whether you lose or whether you win. You just need to buy that time on a continuous level because they have lots of good lawyers and lots of legal triviality in which you can sue over and over again. And in that time, you have monopoly on this market at the end of the day because when it comes to consumer industries in, spe in specific, it becomes only a few companies that have holding in this kind of markets because you're taking out a competitor away just because you sue them they have more incentive to just sue them lots of details we believe that this reduces the competition linking back to the original saying of why we don't uh, we, why we do need to stop monopoly as a proper government we need more competition so we need to stop these kind of legal trivialities and stopping uh, creating this kind of vacuum of competition in which they can sell whatever product they like, not care for the consumer rights and not care about its own development. Because we have broken down the opening opposition and because we have made a very clear, unique contribution coming from the closing of sorry, closing opposition, we believe that our government, yes, we believe that we take the debate home. How do you put it back in? I can do it. Yes. I thank the member of government for his speech. Now I'd like to welcome the member of opposition, Kaka from QU2. May I begin? Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, members of the House, today coming from closing opposition, we have a very clear stance on the idea that we want to strive for a knowledge-based economy, a knowledge-based society. And when corporations have this knowledge and they actually have a right, we think that it's clear it's in their right to protect their own ideas and their uh, knowledge. Coming from closing opposition today, we're going to make the biggest contribution in this debate. We have one level of extension on two levels of analysis. First of all, we're going to talk about why the essence of patents actually can essentially protect smaller corporations. Why it's actually beneficial to have patents for smaller corporations. Before I do that, I'm going to directly engage with my previous speaker on what he tried to bring today. So the biggest issue, all three teams having a deadlock on the idea of what incentive is. Let's look at it this way. There's Apple and there's me, right? So when, when they, we actually don't have patents, A, Apple has less incentive to actually create new things because of the fact that they don't have exclusive protection. They know that I'm going to copy them. They have no exclusive protection on this right, and they know they have no incentive to make anything new. Second of all, B, I have no, I at the same time, have no incentive to create any kind of new technology to combat against Apple's technology because of the fact that what? I have the easiest choice. I can copy, it'll be no problem. There's no incentive to have innovation. Their extension today, sit. They talk about why do companies participate, participate in litigation wars and the problem litigation wars. Three levels response. First of all, we think corporations, we told you, have the right to protect their details and ideas if they feel the need. We think this is clearly a level of allowing the, themselves to protect themselves. 
Second level of analysis that we think that when there's also software program, which they don't talk about, is that these unique ideas of software programming can't come out when you just say the fact the problem is litigation wars. Uh, Third of all, from that sit down, we think that these litigation processes are the necessary checks and balances in our society to actually check who is right and who is wrong. We think that the prob if the problem is dealing with that process itself, get rid of the process, not patent itself. We think this is clearly problematic. You are out of this debate. Now, to sit down. Moving on to the opening. So they t tell you the idea, like, right? Like, no, sit down. They say, wheels and cart, right? So if there's a patent on wheels, there's a problem. We think it's clearly a change of time, right? There's a necessity to actually have protections of different technologies, of different ideas for this to occur. And they tell you that, you know, it's going to, no, sit down, sir. They talk about how it's going to be more out of the box ideas. Rather, I told you today from my uh, rebuttal about the less incentive. Because of the fact that you can clearly copy, there's less incentive for you to do anything really new. We think this is clearly problematic. Now, I'm going to move on today about our clear extension say about why patents are actually in, in essence protecting smaller companies. I have two levels of analysis. Sit down. First of all, we think that the removal of patents, I asked this in my POI, right? If we remove patents, what happens? The removal of patents basically simplifies the essence of all products. It's not about what you can provide through your product as a small company, big company. It's rather, it's, what the, it's not about what kind of technology you provide, okay. what kind of, just keep standing, what kind of design you actually provide to our society. Rather, it's just about, it's not something new feature. You can't actually win with these features. It's more about basically what the product is, what company it came from. When this happens, when you oversimplify, it's basically on the fact that big companies such as Apple can just bombard and assault you with PR and commercials and use this marketing power to obliterate smaller corporations. Smaller corporations have no fight in the, because of the fact that they're thrown out of the game on the fact that they cannot actually have the same level of money and finance to fight through these marketing wars and PR assaults. All that happens is that even if the small company has a great product, they bring out great new technology, it's not standing in our society because of the fact that it's just a company war and a level of corporation PRing. And before I move on, yes, Taehyung? We gave you an exception on the idea of intellectual property, the Fair Use Act in the United States. This isn't disincentivizing people from making music or publishing research pieces. Clear level of response in this debate. Now, I didn't want to deal with their idea, but they keep clinging to the idea of fair act. With the FAIR Act, if you write a paper and some professor uses it, I actually benefit because my thesis is thrown to more people in our society. This is a different level. I have the right to actually protect my technology and use it to actually financially use it for my own economic gain and to see what I can get from it. Rather on the level of FAIR Act use, it's clearly different on that level because the FAIR Act level is better because the more publicity I get, the more people see my ideas, it's better. Second level extension today. Why? No, sit down, man, sit. Why except what? No patents means that smaller companies have less room for means of pushing across new technology. Madam Speaker, what we saw on our side recently, we saw with Facebook, what we're doing, they, they used $550 million to buy off technology through, by the patents of smaller companies. We think that this level of buying this patent is very beneficial for these corporations. On the idea, when they have this idea, but they don't want to push it across on that level, if they can give it to a big company, they can actually gain from selling it off to the big company. This is actually protecting the smaller companies. Keep standing there. What you actually do when you actually obliterate patents is that the thing occurs that these bigger companies can basically use wield all their power and all their ability with their knowledge to get anything they want. They can go around all the world, get all this information and basically not pay off the patent but just say it was their technology and it's their product. This is very detrimental to the smaller companies who cannot actually profess it to our society, who cannot actually put on level of marketing. And it's before I want, yes sir. If you didn't engage on our extension, how else are you going to protect patents if you don't have legal procedures with your extension was that litigation wars are bad. I proved to you that if litigation wars is the only level of why patent is so problematic, deal with that process first, not getting rid of the essence of patent in itself. That's why your extension fails. It had no standing in this debate. Now, moving back to our second level of extension. When you tell you that these small companies can actually bring new technology to our society but can't push it across, then that's the level when they can actually use this legal power and this idea of a patent to sell it to a small, to a bigger company for a, big, for a level of money for the economic benefit. It. We think that this actually benefits the smaller companies on a level, the fact that when Facebook says that I want your technology but I'm willing to pay for it, then they can actually settle on this level. But when we don't have patents, Facebook doesn't come to you and say they want it. They just say, they bring it out. And the next day you see in the news, new technology, boom, that's what Facebook brought. You didn't do anything for it. You don't get any benefit for it. Smaller companies fail. We're here to say that smaller companies need this level of minimum protection. 
So coming from closing opposition today, really, we'll de we dealt with you. Why this incentive doesn't really occur for in innovation? Big companies don't see the fact that they have any advantage for exclusive protection. They're just going to sit there and use their money for marketing power. On the level of smaller companies, you, you feel that there's no incentive to, for you to, to bring anything new. You can just simply copy, I'll be copying Apple, I'll be fine with it. Our extensions today about why patents in essence protect smaller corporations. First, on a level of how it actually doesn't simplify every single product. If you have these patents, if you have these different ideas, you can't actually just win through marketing work. You have to prove your product. Second level of extension today we brought you to this house was why these patents actually protect the small corporations on a simple economic level. If I have that small piece of technology, I can sell, it to, I sell my patent to Facebook, reap benefit from it. This is why we're here to strongly oppose this motion. Madam Speaker, it's clear today that closing opposition takes the first. Thank you. Mr. and Madam Judicators, coming from Korea, especially the issue that exemplifies consumer technology industries regarding this matter of the issue of Apple versus Samsung, this motion is quite close to my heart. But another thing, before I go into anything, before organizing the clashes, two little responses to what the member of opposition has just said. He claimed that in case of patents, when we don't have patents, that smaller companies will be harmed. Furthermore, that the problems coming from our extension is basically the fact if you have problems, just get rid of the, 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 the legal system, it takes such a long time. We believe on a first level, the reason why you have all these litigation wars, the first reason why you have all these companies, big corporates such as Apple and Samsung abusing is because patents exist. When you have patents, it's an inherent nature to sue them, just for the hell of it, for whatever reasons and whatnot. Your response is clearly irresponsible, providing that you need an alternate mechanism that still protects patents, but as well gets rid of the harms that we have just brought about. We ask the opposition whip to answer in that manner. Second level response is that you don't, you're not protecting the smaller companies. Rather, the main reason in today's society you see a nearby polarity regarding smartphones with Motorola, Nokia, far, far behind, is basically because of these patents. Basically because they can't keep up with them. Basically because these patents block them from providing anything new to their current technology. With that said, let's take, let's take a look at today's clashes. Mr. and Madam Adjudicators and ladies and gentlemen in the house, we believe that there are basically three clashes, two main clashes in today's debate. One, regarding, there was such a muddle, there was such a mess, because nobody really clarified what patents meant in consumer technology industry. So, is it really that innovative, or is it something trivial as it's dealt with, as it's exemplified with the litigation wars between Apple and Samsung? Number two, that if that is the case, what, are there more harms and benefits regarding what all both houses, all four, all one, two, three, four, five, six speakers has said before me? So, before I go on, any of us. Yes, sir. We don't think that that is the crux of today's debate. Fundamentally, no one has dealt with opening opposition's idea that payment laws exist to achieve equilibrium between compensating the developer's value and also allowing consumers to pay for it with the amount of purchasing power they have. Mr. Adjudicators, Madam Adjudicators, basically what they're saying is that payments are important, right? But the question is, coming from the characterization of the old leader of opposition, he claimed that payments, especially in consumer and energy technology, isn't something as functionally innovative, but it's rather a set nature as we characterize regarding the usefulness of how it fits into consumers, how it efficiently makes them utilize it, meaning it isn't that much of an innovative technology such as transition from 2G to 
3 gene, such as innovative transitions from having Pentium 3 to Pentium 4 or whatnot. But rather, let's take a look at the patents that are being dealt with in today's study by Apple and Samsung. They're talking about multitasking while music, they're talking about bounce back effects, they're talking about the basic design, they're talking about how these icons are around there and whatnot. Go on to another joke coming from the basically I, Apple can sue a Samsung refrigerator because it's rectangular and because it has rounded corners. We believe that such patents are kind of trivial compared to the important patents they're talking about, meaning it only creates more harm when you keep having litigation wars against it and buying more time for yourself to uh, not so. monopolize the market, buying yourself over non-important patents just because they're considered patents in the first. And we believe distinctively, unlike other forms of technologies, other form of industries that regarding consumer industries, regarding consumer technology industries, you need to differentiate the importance, the value, and balance out whether or not this is really affecting consumers, whether or not this is really affecting other industries as well. In the cost benefit analysis, because these are essentially non-important, unlike what they wish to characterize, their case fails regarding major important patents, why or why not need compensation for them when you're already being compensated regarding the sales you have and whatnot. So going on, are there really more harms and benefits? Please all sit down. With regarding the harms and benefits regarding the major harms, the major benefits they claim to be is the normal argumentation you can't guess when you have re motions regarding patents. Basically, they're saying you need, first of all, comp compensation for the R&D you put in. Second, you're talking about protecting small industries when we have clearly told you in my rebuttals that it's based the fact because you have patents that smaller industries, smaller ca companies cannot come in, they can't even provide generic methods to utilize these technologies and promote their own products. Second, they talked about how it's very harmful because you'll be bombarded by PR, you'll be bombarded by Apple's brand image and whatnot. Very clear example regarding this is when the new iPhone 5 came out, sales actually dropped. People weren't that stupid enough, consumers weren't that stupid, they were rational enough to decide, oh, Apple, I'll just buy it. It wasn't the fact. They actually clearly analyzed whether or not there were more new and innovative technology worthy of spending $600, $800. They actually analyzed the fact, because there wasn't anything new, that they show that they aren't simply bombarded, they aren't simpletons because it's an Apple product, because it's a Samsung product that you'll just buy it. We believe that their argumentation fails because we have trust in the consumers to decide even without new innovations, you'll still buy it. So coming up with the harms from the, especially from the closing government bench, we gave you an alter, we gave you a clear extension regarding why in this case patents in consumer technology industry is so harmful. Because of the fact, if you look at how Apple, look at how Samsung initiates a lawsuit, the basic the basic strategy of Apple is to file a preliminary injunction so that until it's cleared up. They have a complete monopolization of the market. Their oppositions cannot sell their products. Meaning, why is monopolization so bad? One, uh, sorry. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> One, for the fact is, what you're doing is simply forcing out the choice of an individual, not talking about the fundamental human rights they're talking about, but rather you're denying them the right to choose. You're denying them when you want to buy a certain product that befits your own interest, you're forcing them to buy a relatively low product like Nokia, like Motorola, when they're way long down the tier. Why is it beneficial to take out those choices. Second level regarding monopolization is simply put, because you have complete control over that industry, whether or not when you actually say style or the efficiency that consumers can use these products is the essence of consumer industry technology, why do you want to deprive them of certain changes regarding when you're stagnant, when you monopolize the industry, these companies are remaining status and remaining stagnant. For all these reasons, the opening closing government takes its way home. No, oh, I can do it. Thank you, Opposition Whip. Now I'd like to invite the last speaker of this debate, Opposition Whip, Tim Bomi from KU2.
like this. Um. Mr. Speaker and members of the House, clearly opening government doesn't know what patent is. Clearly closing government doesn't know the burden of this debate. We believe that rather than talking about how Apple is better than Samsung, how we like the concept of wheels because it you know, allowed other things to be developed, the clear context or the burden of the debate is that what good comes out of this concept of patent why is this a necessary concept that exists in our society? Why is this a necessary protection for the companies who compete in the world of knowledge? We believe this burden was only fulfilled by closing opposition. So as the last speaker of today's debate, even though Yongjae did a wonderful job of winning this tournament, I'd like to do two things. Firstly, what a patent is, how both sides disagreed upon this concept. Secondly, what happens once we uh, allow this policy to happen. So firstly, moving directly into my first clash. Firstly, what is a patent? Now, opening government comes to, comes up to the podium, despite all their long prep time, tells us that no one can own anything because everything else is occupied. Sit down. We tell you, Mr. Speaker, a patent is a very, very legal and specific concept. So when you have a very, very new program, when you have a very new technology or a very distinct characteristic within your, uh, you know, gadget, that's what companies apply yeah. for patents. So when you have like Apple home, home button, that's clearly a very new concept that is developed by Apple, right? When you have Samsung who has like dual core system that's only developed by Samsung that allows faster wide growth, then that's clearly something developed, uniquely developed by Samsung, right? Yeah. So for them to come up to the podium and say, no one can own cell phones because it's already occupied is completely false. Yeah. Why? Because patents only protect a very, very specific technology. We tell you, you really need the technology yeah to develop something new is completely false. Sit down. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, we tell you, even with these necessary protections, innovation keeps going on. Why? Because let's see the example of, of you know, I keep talking about Apple. Apple, right? They first developed the concept of smartphone, yet, you know, the Google comes up with Android, a new system of really new innovation within that existing concept. People keep developing new technologies, new unique technologies. We say that the development continues. Why? Because we say, you know, patent discourages people from ripping off ideas, encourages people to come up with new ideas with a concept called monetary compensation. We say that, in fact, if you want more innovation, you're in fact uh, supporting us directly, right? So secondly, let's move on to the concept of what we're talking about within the uh, legal con content called patent. We tell you, Mr. Speaker, patent is, in fact, stopping people from stealing yeah. things, right? Pa in the past, we had the police doing that. Why? Because the thing Max. that companies used to earn profit was actually a tangible thing. Rather, in the human society that we're evolving into, that idea itself becomes the profit. We tell you that's what we mean by knowledge-based society. That's why we invented the concept of patent, because we simply do not believe that it's legally and morally correct for companies to rip off what others had and steal it to use it as their own profit, we tell you that concept was something that was never engaged by the government as a whole. Sit down. So let's, let's move on to my second uh, clash, which was more important uh, in, in our regard in terms of this debate. What happens exactly? Firstly, opening government told us the idea of monopoly because a lot of the big companies will only succeed without any elevation, to be fair sit down because these companies would be able to control the price. Firstly, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, we think that that's simply not true. Why? Because we see different companies with different patents competing in the field of consumer technology because we are living in such a developed world. Technology keeps continuing to develop. Technology keeps being invented. Therefore, different companies simply are competing in the status quo, even within the barriers of uh, patents. We tell you, therefore, that's why price control will never happen. Secondly, and more importantly, 
Mr. and Madam Speaker, what is so wrong with monopoly when that's something that these companies, you know, oligopoly, when the, it's something that these companies earned for by developing good quality of goods? We tell you because it's oligopoly, like different multiple billionaires competing, price control doesn't happen. But more importantly, it's something that these companies, if they worked for it, they deserve it, right? Because you never explained what's bad about it. Closing. Ma'am, regarding patents, when you have four different, nine different nations given by different judges, how can you say that's a commonly accepted common idea? Stop, stop, I'll explain that. Secondly, in terms of first mover advantage, Mr. and Madam Speaker, I don't think it's that. Why? Just because Youngjae steals my cell phone five months after I buy it doesn't mean he's not stealing it, right? We think that that concept of stealing still exists. So let's move on to what closing is, you know, hoping for, the concept of litigation. Firstly, Mr. and Madam Speaker, we think that they're not directly engaging or co explaining to us why okay. patent, sit down, patent itself is bad. Why? Because what they're explaining is the term called litigation, why it's ineffective in certain nations in certain cases. That does not okay. prove that patent itself has huge yeah. harm. But secondly, more importantly, we tell you, we will explain to you, Mr. and Madam Speaker, sit down, I'm not taking any more POIs. We think that they, we, we've proven to you why removing patent itself has greater harms than the process of lax litigation. But secondly, more importantly, Mr. and Madam Speaker, we think that litigation is a necessary protection that exists. Why? If somebody reaps benefit out of something that they undeserving and undeservingly had, we think that the protection is necessary in many, many cases. For, so for them to come up with one small example is simply not true. And lastly, if you know litigation was truly a very very petty and un unnecessary one. We think that the process will end quickly, so no harm for you. So let's move on to the only harm existing in this debate. So what happens exactly when we get rid of patents? We think that patent is especially more impactful when it comes to small companies who can't protect themselves. So firstly, there is no compensation to the companies or individuals who come with true innovation, who develop something truly new, who deserve some kind of compensation because now big companies with efficient, quick factory roles can simply rip off the idea and earn millions and millions of dollars. It is simply unfair. Secondly, we told you about the idea of how competition will be based on market, how competition will be based on the price of the good, therefore small companies, even with good technology, cannot survive because big corporates with a lot of money can simply dumb down the price, simply give a lot of AS services and dominate the market. If that's what you're dreading for, we think that your side has to lose in this debate. Therefore, at the end of the day, we brought you the principle, we brought you the practical benefit harms, which was never engaged by any of the sides we are very, very happy to oppose. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the grand finals of the first China BPF VLC 2012. Debaters, thank you for a wonderful day. Please cross the floor and shake hands. Judges, I believe there is a cozy room for you on the left. Please decide your results.